in our prayer time, in our stillness, in our meditation, we have an opportunity to ask those scary questions in the secret place. God's going to keep your secret. But you can say, I don't know why I'm doing this and I feel overwhelmed. And in that space, God gives us permission to, to change, to modify, or to show up differently. So that's, the I think, an incredible gift we get from even that soul awareness. I'm so excited to have my friends Tore and Sarah Roberts here. And uh, Tore has written a book called Balance, and it's about this exact topic. Uh, welcome, guys. It's so great to see you. Thank you. We're so glad to be here. Yeah. So first, uh, how is your church going? I know this. You know, we've been in this long period of COVID where a lot of churches you know, took a big hit. I know my church did. Uh, you know, people obviously couldn't go to church for a long time, a lot of fear. Um, are you guys, how have you experienced that pastorally? <sighs> Yeah, it's been, uh, well, we've, you know, experienced our challenges much like all the churches in the world did. Uh, but we did invest a lot of money in technology and production over the past several years, unbeknownst to us that that would be all that we would have to rely upon. Uh, so things have gone well. We had that investment in place. Uh, we went completely online, didn't go back to in-person services until Easter of this year. So we were out for two years. And um, it's been really, really good. We've noticed that the... The church now went from local and then somewhat global to global and yeah. then somewhat local because of the, you know, the online reach. And so, so it, it's gone good. Thank God we, uh, we had those mechanisms in place. I know a lot of churches, um, and sadly, you know, a lot of churches went out, I don't know what else the term is, but went out of business, yeah. you know, because they couldn't pay their lease. And yet there have been some churches that seem to have this special touch as you did. I think you guys are both visionaries and you probably knew beforehand you know, we need to get into media. We mm. need to have these things in place. And it seems like maybe for you, what was bad for a lot of organizations and ministries ended up being a, a big blessing for you and for your, your, your outreach. I know a lot of people go to your church. Yeah, I have to tell you that initially when the pandemic first hit, I was not as innovative as my husband was. I think that I was so busy grieving and longing for the way things were that I couldn't even wrap my mind around how we now respond to this new frontier. Thankfully, um, you know, with my husband's prayer and covering and guidance, <laughs> I began to think outside of the box. And I think that that's what the gift of the pandemic really was. Yeah. Um, amidst all of the other struggles and grief that were connected to it, it was an opportunity to think outside of the box, not just for us as an organization, but how can we care for our neighbors? How can we totally. pay more attention to the essential workers that we may just generally pass by? And through that thinking outside of the box, I was able to pivot Woman Evolve, which is, you know, my baby, um, my ministry and the organization that I am building to help women to pivot them into connecting more digitally because we were just in person only. Can you say the name of that ministry? Woman time? Evolve. Women Evolve. Yeah. Yes. Right? So Woman Evolve, um, it started in 2018 and it was just supposed to be a conference idea. But when the pandemic hit, we did virtual events, yeah. we uh, upped our podcast, we upped our social media, our mailing list, just so that women knew that we were not uh, going to leave them behind, even though there were many moments where it felt like we were isolated. Yeah, that's awesome. I know you're both pastors and you think pastorally, even though you have a global outreach, you do have a local congregation in LA. LA is an interesting city, isn't it? I grew up here and uh, it's, it is full of dreamers. There are a lot of people who come here, but there's a lot of people who get brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of successful people who are brokenhearted too because they achieve their dreams, but it doesn't you know, bring them what they want. And I know you guys don't talk about this a lot, but you have a lot of influential people in your circle, a lot of high influence, um, you know, leaders of businesses, celebrities, po political people, influential people. And I'm sure that as a pastor, they invite you into some of the personal aspects of their life. I'm sure, did that like impact this idea of balance? Were you seeing imbalance in their lives or were there some in these high power positions that, you know, really represented balance well and you maybe saw, like was that a part at all of, of putting this book together? Yeah, I, I think uh, not, not only was that the challenge for some of the people in the categories that you just mentioned, but it was a challenge for us. Yeah. You know, as we, as Sarah mentioned, you know, have the Woman Evolve tour and, you know, the books and some of the other things that we do in real estate and various things, I needed balance myself. Right. And, uh, and I just believe that there's a solution 
to every challenge that we face. And, um, and you know, the subtitle for balance is positioning yourself to do all things well. Yeah. And what it says about Jesus, as you know, is that it said that he did all things well. And yeah. there was no one more busy <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. Than, than Jesus. And so I, I was up for the challenge. Yes, certainly to, to serve my community with that message, but also to serve myself. Yeah, I, yeah. No, I was just going to say, when my husband first get, told me about the idea of writing balance, I thought to myself, great, now I'm going to know what time to wake up. I'm going to know how much time to allocate <laughs> to the gym. Like, I was ready to receive yeah. balance, especially considering, you know, the ebbs and flows of how the world was changing. But what I learned in, you know, sneaking over the laptop and, and catching a few peeks while he was writing the book is that balance had nothing to do with time management and everything to do with mm -hmm. inner management. Wow. And suddenly I realized that the depletion I was experiencing, the weariness, the worry, the stress had less to do with how I was managing more t my time and more to do with how I was not managing my spirit and my energy and my mental health mm -hmm. and my soul. And so one of the things that I have personally just gained and learned from balance is an opportunity to really take my insides more seriously so that my outsides can flourish organically. So tell me more about that. That's really interesting. If when you think about balance, you know, in a lot of professional type books on management or leadership, there's going to be a lot of like fix your calendar and this type yeah. of thing. Mm -hmm. But you're kind of saying, no, fix your heart, mm -hmm. right? There's something going on inside your body, inside your soul that the Lord needs to do a work on. How does, how, how does a Christian view of balance differ from just a secular view of balance? Like what's different about for pastors? Like how do we teach people to find balance in their life? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. I like to unpack it in stages. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one, I, I think that balance is this topic where you never hear anyone say, I've got balance under control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When people are talking about balance, 99.9% .9 of the people are saying, I need balance in my life. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about what exactly are they saying? Essentially, when they're saying that, they're confessing that there's some area in their life that's important to them that they're not doing well in. You know, because at the end of the day, it's I'm not doing well, I'm not doing good at some particular area. Mm -hmm. So as I begin to pursue balance, I realize that I don't know if it's time management, you know, because yeah. most people think that balance is about figuring out a way to give an equal amount of pieces of yourself to the things that matter the most. Mm -hmm. Well, that's illogical. I, yeah. I can't give a piece of me to my spouse. I can't give a piece of me to the mm -hmm. congregation, to my investors. I have to give all of myself to them. And so, so for me, it was a redefining of balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, it's not about doing everything because God knows we can't do everything. It's about becoming mm -hmm. the best version of yourself and then giving that to the mm -hmm. things that matter, to your spouse, to your kids, to your work, yeah. uh, et cetera. So I think from a, from a Christian perspective, the, the best way that I can describe it is Jesus has this encounter with the Pharisees and they're accusing him, they're, you know, as they always did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> they're accusing him up, and they were accusing something that he was doing. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, no, no, and I'm paraphrasing. He says, oh, no, I, I know that what I'm doing is right because I only do what I see my father do. Mm -hmm. Now that's a profound statement. I only, I only do on earth mm -hmm. what I see my father do in heaven. Mm -hmm. So essentially he was saying that I see myself, I see a version of myself in the heavenly realm and I am aligning with that version of myself and living out my life here, there, therefore, I'm winning, I'm doing the right thing. And so for, for the, the Christian, you know, I, I like to use the term alignment. You know, for me, I believe that when God told Jer when God spoke to Jeremiah in Jeremiah one, and he says, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you and I ordained you and I did all these sort of things. My interpretation of that is that he is speaking to two Jeremiah's. He's speaking to the Jeremiah that he's talking to about a Jeremiah that has already been perfected. Mm -hmm. okay. And, so, and so, so for a Christian, for a believer, what the Holy Spirit does is the Holy Spirit allows us to be the version of ourselves that we want to be but can't access outside of the Spirit. So I know I went around the, yeah. <laughs> around the mountain with that, yeah, but yeah. that's what balance is. Balance is figuring out how to be here who God has called me to be there mm -hmm. and bringing those two planes together. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I am, if I am the Torah, 
that God foreknew before he put me in my mother's womb, if I'm working the disciplines to, mm -hmm. to, to live out, to align with that person, then everything that I do, marriage, mm -hmm. family, business, pastoring, I'm going to be able to do well. Mm -hmm. If you're just joining us, I'm interviewing Tori Roberts about his new book. We're here with Tori and Sarah, and this book balance is so good. And I think it's something that people today really need in their lives because mm -hmm. people think if I just give it 110% and burn the candle <laughs> at both ends, that'll make me more successful. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I love in your book is that you kind of show us that when you find balance in your life, you'll actually be more successful oh, yeah. than if you're just burning yourself out constantly. And I, I hope it's okay for me to ask this mm -hmm. because you, you just mentioned it briefly, but you know, for all those people, we have a lot of people maybe that are watching that aren't Christians or sort of dipping their toe in the water of faith, you know? Yeah. And I'm sure we have CEOs and business leaders that are watching. You had mentioned earlier, you're in real estate and mm -hmm. you said, uh, mm -hmm. you know, my investors or something. Yeah. It's interesting to hear you and you've got this conference that you're doing. You guys aren't just limited to church. Mm -hmm. You have media, you have uh, these other businesses. First of all, would you mind telling me a, a little bit more about those other aspects? and? If you have this entrepreneurial CEO type thing and you're a pastor, how do you find time for like your family and I don't know, you know, doing whatever's fun and how do you find that balance? I, 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 there's a difference between who I am and what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, who, I, who I am remains consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, I love God. I'm a father. I'm a husband. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm a leader. Those things are uh, really uh, essential to who I am as a human being, uh, how I make money, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, the the good that I do through business that impacts the world, all those things are extensions. Yeah. And so that, for me, just even that mentality, is one of the things that keeps me in balance. I am not what I do. Mm -hmm. I am who I am, and I choose to do that which will preserve who I am. Mm -hmm. And so in some seasons, you know, it's, I have to put the business aside. I have, yeah. look, I'm not, I'm not investing anything right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing any deals right now. My wife needs me. Yeah. My, 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 my children need me. And so, um, it, it is about sequence. You know, when I talk about balance, you know, you, you, you can do it all, just not all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So being still enough to perceive what part of me is screaming for attention, what part of me uh, needs me the most, that stillness and the mm -hmm. clarity pertaining to that that comes in the stillness is one of the ways that we manage all that stuff. I, I hope I answered your question. I, I think you I'm, did. Right. No, no, you know, because it's, it's interesting when, because we know a lot, I know a lot of pastors, you know, and most pastors are very honed in on just their ministry and there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But you guys are so, you're so much broader in your vision for what's possible. And I'm sure there's a lot of crossover between mm -hmm. these worlds. I'm sure you learn a lot in the business world that works well for your ministry or vice mm -hmm. versa, relationally, you pastorally, you know how to deal with people and that helps you, you know, when you're negotiating or mm -hmm. dealing with people. Um, I just think it's really interesting. And especially because if anybody didn't have balance, it would seem like it mm -hmm. would be someone that has so much going on, mm -hmm. you know, as you do. And I think it's valuable for people at home to know Oh, he's just a pastor. Of course, he's finding balance because all he has to do is go to church on Sunday. But you, you've got a lot going on. You know, it's interesting, uh, Sarah, uh, when you, I hope it's okay for me to ask this, but you were talking about looking over, you know, Torrey's shoulder. I'm picturing you like coming by, like, how's it going? You know, like, do you write about me yet? You know, this kind of thing. Did you notice, I know a lot of times authors will go through personal change. They say, if you want to learn something, teach it, you know. Did you notice a change at all in Torrey as he was, like balance in his, you mentioned balance in your own life you found, but did you see any change in him? Absolutely. He changed tremendously while writing this book. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he went away to write the book and got about halfway through, which is about 25,000 words, and then scrapped it all. No. Scrapped it all, oh which 25,000 words is no, that's not chump change. Yeah, yeah that's, that's um, death. <laughs> <laughs> that is a that's loss pain. in the yeah. family. <laughs> and um, so he said he wanted to start over. What I noticed about him is that while he was writing the book, 
it's like God was changing the definition mm -hmm. that he had when he first began. Mm -hmm. And I think the greatest sacrifice that you had to make was not being married to your definition of balance, mm -hmm. yeah. but to really be open to what God was saying, even if it meant it was different from the proposal, mm -hmm. even if it yeah. meant it was different from where he started, because what was most important to him was that it was what he saw his father in heaven mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that um, I saw him man pour himself out i saw him dig deeper and as a result of it i don't believe that there could have been a better time for this book to have been written mm -hmm. because so many of us are straddling the fence of the old normal and the new normal mm -hmm. and is it okay to miss it and how do i walk into this new phase of my life mm -hmm. without uh, feeling uncertainty or insecurity and yet there is a way mm -hmm. for us to show up in our lives that doesn't make us feel inadequate or less than or mm -hmm. overwhelmed and yeah. stress mm -hmm. and I feel like that's what I needed mm -hmm. more than anything and um, I know that people are already being so blessed by that yeah mm -hmm. I know um, so pastor I mean I know there's a lot of people we talked about CEOs and you know influential people but there is a certain type of person that works just as hard as they do or even yeah. harder and that's that single mom that has two jobs yeah. and has to take the bus does this book speak to them what do you say to, to oh, yeah. a mom who says you know I'm in this horrible position. I didn't ever think I would get here. I didn't get to go to school or college and I'm working these jobs and I'm trying to take care of my kids. How does someone like that who feels totally trapped find balance in her life? You know, th there's a chapter in the book called There's No Team in I. Mm. Oh yeah, and, turn it around. And <laughs> obviously that's a, that's a play on the pop yeah, saying that's great. there's yeah. no I in team. And I think that the, the, the challenge with all of us, particularly the single mom, is that no one gave her or whomever this would apply to, permission to prioritize themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, Self-prioritization sounds like selfishness, sounds ungodly or what have you. But when we look at the scripture, Jesus said, love the Lord. When he's asked what the greatest commandment is, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. The majority of the people don't recognize that sequence. They think that it is God, neighbor, self, but it is not. It is God self-neighbor. In fact, mm -hmm. you love your neighbor, the benchmark that qualifies how well you love your neighbor is how well you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so I think that what they're going to find in this book, first and foremost, is permission to prioritize themselves, permission yeah. to say no uh, and not feel bad about it and not feel guilty about it. And they're going to learn that self-prioritization is how you prioritize the other things that are in your life. Good. If the single mom is running and gunning and can't stop and won't stop mm -hmm. to ever pause, reflect, spend you know God time, alone time, self-care uh, time, then they're functioning under this false idea that they're actually helping their children, they're helping their husband, they're helping their church in yeah. many cases, yeah. but they're actually hurting it because they can't bring their best self to it. And so, so there's a lot for them, but, but that self-prioritization uh, and not being ashamed of doing so, I think is gonna be a big that's takeaway. That's a big key, isn't it? I mean, I, and that's really the thing, isn't it? There's so many uh, parents, moms, who just get so into that rhythm of always mm -hmm. going, 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 that if I stop and I go to a movie or go to the spa or go on a date, mm -hmm. you know, or something like this, you feel like guilty. Oh, my kids need me. They didn't get to see me today. I'll do it tomorrow. And overcoming that shame is a big part of, of finding balance, mm -hmm. isn't it? It certainly is. You know, I was a single mom and mm -hmm. I can remember trying to overcompensate and be two parents, even though I was just one. Yeah. And in taking care of my two children at the time, one of the things that I really had to remind myself is that I'll never be able to be two parents, but I can be one really great parent. Oh, that's and great. in being one really great parent, I'm gonna have to take time for myself so that I know what I'm feeding my children and not just mm -hmm. what I'm putting on the table, but what's in my heart, what's in my soul, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they're gonna feed from the environment that I create. And so one of the lessons that I learned as a single mom that I've even taken into my incredible partnership with my husband is the ability to communicate with my children on a level that they can understand 
how I'm feeling. So mm -hmm. I have a six-year-old, and sometimes she wants to read me a book while I'm cooking dinner and trying to respond to an <laughs> email. And I'll say, I want to give you all of my attention. So if mm -hmm. you give me one second to finish this email, I'll be all yours. If you let me turn the burner down, then I can be all yours. Because my tendency when I'm stressed or out of balance is to say, girl, like, what I do know. you want yeah, from me? Exactly, <laughs> like, yeah. I've been talking to people all day. I'm not yeah. ready to talk to a six-year-old. I'm letting the food burn. <laughs> like, forget dinner. We're going to McDonald's. I'm ready to quit everything yeah. because I didn't just communicate that, like, I'm not in a place to do everything. And so I've had to learn to not punish myself for not being everything to everyone, mm -hmm. but to be honest about my capacity and to not judge myself for my capacity and to trust God with other people because that's another thing that I think we have to learn to do. Mm -hmm. If we're honest, a lot of us want to be Jesus Jr. Yeah. I don't know if I can say that on TBN, but no, it's you been can. said you now. Can. <laughs> we we want to be G yeah. Jesus Jr. I yeah. want to be there for every single thing that's happened to you. I want to hear everything you have to say, and we just spread ourselves so thin. But even Jesus took time away. That's right. Even Jesus said, I need to breathe. And so while we're practicing being Jesus Jr., we might as well put on the full costume <laughs> and go out into the wilderness to yeah. go out away from mm -hmm. our disciples and our friends and our followers and now say, God, Holy Spirit, Spirit, this is what I need. This is where I am in need. So before I show back up to the multitudes, whatever your multitudes look like, you're full of the presence of the uh, presence of God and the presence of yourself. Mm -hmm. You've you've really lived this, and I, I, I'm sure there had to be times during that season of your life where you felt like I'm going to be stuck here for a long time, or you felt like I'm not, you know, I'm not a good mom. A thought came to me as you were talking and saying this, and I'm like, I think. If you feel guilty about taking time for yourself, that's a pretty good indicator that you're probably a pretty good parent, <laughs> yeah, right? Because yeah. bad parents don't feel guilty about mm -hmm. ditching out on their kids. It's <laughs> yeah. the good parents that if you're already probably doing a pretty good job, yeah. if you have the sense like, I can't leave, I can't leave. Mm -hmm. And so you're just giving people permission today mm -hmm. to invest in yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Investing in yourself is one of the best ways you can invest in others. That's kind of one of the ideas Mm -hmm. The idea I'm getting from your book is that when I, when I spend time here with the Lord or in a way to refill my tank, I'm going to be the kind of parent my kids need. I don't need to feel guilty. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you're going to be the kind of spouse that your partner needs, yeah. you know, because one of the things when Tere and I first got married, he would go for the weekend and he would take some time to pray and be mm -hmm. in the presence of the Lord and, and to maybe oh. do a little shopping <laughs> and eat a little sushi. It's and, very spiritual. <laughs> very, very spiritual. spiritual. Yeah. Fish and five loaves of bread, there fish and rice that's giving there sushi. And um, I had to really deal with my heart about that because I think, I, to me, I, I want to say I felt abandoned. But mm -hmm. the truth is that I was really kind of jealous mm -hmm. that he was able to take that time away. And then he goes, you take your time, too. And yeah. when we gave one another space to do that in the context of our marriage, we became better partners to one another. Now, we, we weren't like off the map. You know, he could he could find me and call me and I can do the right. same, but it's an opportunity for us to to breathe and yeah. exhale because yeah, we're yeah. constantly mm -hmm. breathing in so much. It's funny when you said that, I, I remember hearing that, and I don't know if you've seen this, but resentment is located not in anger, but in envy. Yeah, I saw that with Brene Brown. That's who it was, yes. it was Brene Brown. And I, that hit me so hard. I was like, so what you were saying was just that exact thing that, it, that if you're feeling some resentment towards your spouse, and let's be honest, yeah. if we feel resentment, it's usually towards a spouse. <laughs> you know, a lot of times. It's, and there's something about what the spouse is doing that you're, you're envious of. So it's like the way yeah. to get rid of that anger sometimes is to find a way to do what they're doing too, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And you know, just looking at you guys, you seem like you're in love. You seem like you have a great marriage. You're so fashionable and <laughs> successful. <laughs> But I'm sure there's people on TV that are going, you know, I'll never have something like that, or, you know, or or like, oh, of course they have balance in their life. But do you do you have challenges in your marriage and your family, things you face? I mean, I know you do. I mean, but it's it's hard when people are at home; they don't always see it because you look so great. What are what are some ways that balance? Do you have challenges? First of all, if you don't mind mm -hmm. me asking yeah, such yeah, a personal <laughs> question, of course you do. But how does this idea of balance speak more to especially in marriage how mm -hmm. it can help you with your marriage yeah I, I think that the individual is the center point of balance um, and again in a marriage in a relationship you are often so connected to things that are outside of you mm -hmm. that that's where the challenge comes in um, 
when you look at a marriage, a marriage, you've got two people involved in that marriage. I have discovered that when each person is well, mm -hmm. that's when the marriage does well. Yes. And so, so the idea of balance for me, honey, you mentioned capacity earlier, and I thought that that was a phenomenal word as it relates to balance, because here is the truth. We all have a limited capacity. In fact, we ourselves are a limited resource. Mm -hmm. And so balance is about protecting that. Uh, it's about acknowledging, hey, I'm getting close to empty. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, you know, and if I, if I hit empty, that's too far. You know, when you think about driving a car, mm -hmm. you know, if you get to empty, you're on the side of the road. Right. Right. And so, so you have signs mm -hmm. and you have gauges in your car. Uh, and sometimes just a flat out knowing, wait, I've been driving for four days, <laughs> yeah. you know. And, and so, it, so it is to fill up. It is to, to, to recognize that if, if my tank goes low, we're going to have problems in our marriage, mm -hmm. right? If, if, if my tank goes low, I'm not going to have the patience or the awareness to perceive where my kid is and yep. what my kid needs. Yeah. And so challenges, sure we do, because all of us flirt with the, 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 the E-line, don't we? You know, it, oh, it, yeah, empty. we, yeah, we, yeah. we, we <laughs> flirt with, with empty. Yeah. Uh, but I have learned, see, all it takes, let's, I'll tell you a story. I ran out of gas one time and it was not fun. Yeah. All it took me f was one time to run out of gas to say I'm never gonna run out of gas again. So we practice balance. Mm -hmm. we, we recognize that, man, if, if I'm on empty, you know, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna be fussy when I come home, I'm not gonna have patience, I'm not gonna be nurturing, and God forget, here's the thing, the person that I am when I am not balanced is not this guy that's sitting here. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like the, the you now, know. Wait, when you say you ran out of empty, I thought you were talking about your car, but you meant personally. Oh, no, no, e. well, both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I no, wanna I, ask you, I, I, I wanna ask yeah, you yeah. as a pastor, because as pastors, you know, people think we're these living saints, but we're mm -hmm. not, right? We're, we're broken and we have things we deal with. Was there ever a time where you were so overstretched mm -hmm. that, like you would say that I was, my life was completely out of balance, even though I was a Christian and I loved the Lord. And Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, that ha it certainly has happened. I think that's the impetus for this book. Yeah. You know, what, what it looks like when that happens, you know, and, you know, it looks like nothing to give. Mm -hmm. And that's the worst thing for a pastor. Mm -hmm. The worst thing for a pastor is to yeah. dread yes. getting up to speak. The only reason why any pastor would dread getting up to speak is because he ain't got nothing to say. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, we, we, we love communicating. We love people. We love mm -hmm. sharing. We love growing. So when I'm like right now, you know, for, for example, I've got pastors up this week because I've been on my book tour, yeah. you know, and I've been giving from, you know, from LA to New York, yeah. you know, and so, but, but recognizing that, not being ashamed, not yep. saying, oh, my, my, my flock's going to fall off yeah. if I don't get up there and preach. No, your flock is going to fall off if you get up there and preach because you're not going to have words. anything That's to so share. Good. That's it. So I leverage my team. Uh, so yeah, what it looks like for me when I'm out of balance is I have nothing, yeah. you know, and, it, and here's the thing. It's okay to not have nothing. Yeah. It's just Good. knowing what to do yep. when you get there. And there's there's a bit of ego in it too, isn't there? That I only I can do everything. <laughs> right, right. I think right. everybody needs me. <laughs> I mean, that's that's yeah. a, kind of a check too, isn't it? And that's something I struggle with, where it's like only I can speak. Oh, and only I can go on the book tour, and only I can do this. Yeah. And, and or only I can do it well. Yeah. And and that's, that's a good. mistake. That's yeah. a mistake. Because here's the yeah. thing, when you get out of the way. Mm -hmm. you'll realize that there are people on your team and in your staff that will crush what you think that you have to do. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, maybe it's not that. Maybe it's, they may not crush it like you, mm -hmm. but you need the rest. What's more valuable right now in this season is your rest. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, ego gets in there. And, uh, you know, I, I have this, this chapter in the book. Uh, it's called uh, Balance After the Blow. And it's a powerful, it's one of the most powerful chapters. It's about regaining your equilibrium after some unexpected setback happens to you, mm -hmm. death of a loved one, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And one of the points is going into what I call power save mode, energy save mode, where I am operating on fumes. And when I'm operating on fumes, my energy, my, my uh, the best thing to call is energy, my strength yeah. is reduced. And so now I have to pause and be a strategic 
energy investor mm -hmm. and delegate and, and do all these things. I, I just, this book, you know, I know we're talking about this book, but it's changing my life and I yep. wrote it. And it's, oh yeah. No, I was just gonna say, if I can chime in, you know, I, I, I co-pastor with my husband, but I don't speak every Sunday. Yeah. So I may not relate fully to the every Sunday pressure of having to get up and speak, but I do do think a lot of things at my house and in my home and they're pretty daily. Yeah. And in doing those things, I've got a little ego when I start <laughs> thinking I'm the only one who can do certain things. Like I'm the only one who can cook the dinner. Yep. I'm the only one who can do the girl's hair. I'm the only one who can do the homework. I have put this pressure on myself to be the only one who can do it. And what I am learning is that I do take pride in making an incredible meal for my family. I do take pride in the way I do the girl's hair and the homework and all of those things. But I've also learned that it is not the end of the world if we order in. It is not <laughs> yeah, the end of the world right. if they walk around and their hair is not brushed today. At the end of the day, sometimes I have to choose <laughs> my wellness, my health over um, you know, trying to be super mom because right. there's an imaginary badge that comes with that. Sometimes you got to be willing to take the cape off. Listen, the, the most important person in your life is you. Now that mm -hmm. seems crazy. It's like, oh, it seems so unchristian, <laughs> unspiritual, but it's not true. If you're not good, yeah. mm -hmm. God can't use you. Yeah. You know, if you're depleted, if you're, you know, uh, one of the chapters about the five signs of imbalance, weariness is one of them. Mm -hmm. When you go from being tired to weary, you are on your way down. A lot of great leaders have fallen, not because they were bad people, not because they were immoral people, it's because they were tired people. They were wow. weary yeah, people. Right. So, so uh, to steward me is, is ministry. To steward me first, as goes me, so goes the church, so goes everything. And I think that that's something that uh, there's a paradigm shift that is needed. You yep. know, if, if I'm not well, my church can't be well. That's if right. I'm not well, my business can't be well. If I'm not well, my marriage can't be well. Mm -hmm. So pri self prioritization is everything. That's great. If you're just joining us, I'm with Tori Roberts and Sarah Jake Roberts, and we're, we're talking about this book, Balance, and it is such a gift to so many people because so many of us are struggling to find balance. Whether you're a single mom or CEO of a company, all of us are pulling ourselves in these you know, multiple directions. And I think it's gonna be a gift for so many believers in, around the world. Pull out your phone right now and buy this book. It's gonna make a huge difference in your life. When we come back, I'm gonna talk to you guys both about some practical steps about how we can find balance in our spiritual life, in our business life, in our parental life, whatever it is we're doing. What are some real things we can do today that are gonna make a huge impact right after this? I wasn't at my best. And deep down, I knew it. Something was missing, and I was determined to figure it out. The world had gotten loud, but I just kept on working, going, but not getting anywhere, feeling a longing for something, something more, something greater, something to manifest the best in my life. When I found the courage to stop, I found what I'd been missing. Balance is not a discipline, it's a destination. The place where your highest self lives. And when you find it, everything changes. Your creativity, your relational success, your profitability, your everything is waiting for you in balance. Come journey with me. The best you awaits you. If you're just joining us, we're talking to Tori Roberts and Sarah Jake, Jakes Roberts about the new book, Balance. And I'm so excited about this book. You know, so many books are about like, you know, go, 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 go. And I love the, one of the core principles in this book that if you find balance, you're gonna find more success, mm -hmm. not less. You care about that. I mean, you obviously you care about people's spiritual lives, but part of the formula is you get this right, you're gonna get a lot of other things right mm -hmm. in your marriage, in your relational life, in your spiritual life, and in your business. Um, let's talk about some practical steps. What's something that like anybody today can do right now that would help them find, you know, better balance in their life? I think the first step to balance is actually not a step. It's to stop. Mm. I, I have discovered that it takes more faith to stop than it does to go and to start something new. Mm. And the reason why it takes a lot of faith to stop is because most people believe that if they actually would stop, the world would come 
crumbling down overnight. They <laughs> would be sure. bankrupt, yeah. you know, yeah. they would be out of a job, that whole bit. But even, you know, our, our Lord taught us in the very beginning the principle of the Sabbath. And Sabbath doesn't mean rest. Rest is connected to Sabbath, but that mm -hmm. Hebrew word literally means to cease. Interesting. To stop, yeah. you know. And so, so God, right there in Genesis, is teaching us a, a fundamental principle that it is actually okay to stop. And the one who set your universe in motion and set yeah. everything that you're proud of in motion uh, can sustain it and maintain it while you take time to recreate yourself, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, so I think the first step is to stop. Now, the reason why stopping is so important is because life is noisy. Yeah. L right. Life, and, and here's the thing, life is noisy, but people don't realize how noisy life is because noisy has become normal. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't until you actually stop that you realize, oh my God, my, my norm is noise, yeah. right? And so what's, what's the challenge with noise? Why is noise such a problem? Noise is a problem because you cannot be connected to God's voice in the noise. And so what if God is saying, it's time to make a left or it's time to sow in this field or to do that? Well, you're just going and going and going yeah. and going yeah, yeah. and you're headed towards God knows what. Yeah. And so I think the first step is to stop, uh, to get still. Uh, and then that's gonna bring you to an awareness, right? Because one of the things that the noise does, and I, I can talk about this all day, so just yeah, interrupt yeah, me if yeah. you want. But one of the things about the noise is the noise disconnects you from reality. It only connects you to the reality of everyone else. So you've got your cell phone. And, and if you are on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, what you're doing is you are experiencing the proposed realities yeah. of other people. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So you don't know yeah. if it's your thought. You know, you get on social yeah. media. And if you just scroll your timeline and you've got 10 posts, you can go through 10 different emotions. I'm yeah. happy. I'm sad. I'm angry. Yeah. I'm, you know, yeah. Yeah. jealousy. Jealousy. Yeah. jealousy yeah. All that yeah. sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And so, so, so balance. Balance, the first step to balance is stopping so that you can become aware. It's such a good word. I, I remember this revelation I had when I was at a nice restaurant with my wife and we were at a, at a dinner and I was looking at everybody was on their cell phone. A lot of people were on like this amazing restaurant with this incredible mm -hmm. chef and this amazing expensive experience, you know, you got a babysitter. And sometimes you see couples and they're both on their phones yeah. and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But then the funny thing is my wife got up to go to the bathroom, you know, it was the first thing I did. Yeah. <laughs> I reached for my phone, it was like compulsive. Well, I couldn't just be there and eat the food. I couldn't just enjoy the space or the music or the design of the building or pray or just have a smile. I, I had this built like thing built into me. I'm a pastor, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to be praying. <laughs> and I'm not fully guilty. With you. Like I just, and I like grabbed it as I'm judging these people. Right, right, right. I'm like <laughs> kind of like looking at them with this critical eye. And then my wife gets up to go to the bathroom and I'm like, boop. And I, I didn't have any, there wasn't like nobody was calling me. No. I opened my phone, I didn't know why. I didn't know what I was gonna do when I opened my phone. It was compulsive. Yeah. But is your thumb on autopilot where like you don't even know how you got on Instagram? Right. Like I went to check my message, right. now I'm on Instagram. Totally. Or I went to check the email and now I'm doing this. No, the phone is and not. And it's by design and that's the Absolutely. thing. It's by design. I, it, 13 years, so my background is uh, business and technology. Yeah. So I used to build data centers for Fortune 100 companies. Wow. And I had a guy come to me easy 15, 16 years ago, and he was trying to pitch me something. I should have bought it, actually. But he was trying to pitch me this concept that was undergirded by the fact that everything was going to come to your phone. Mm. You know? And I'm like, get out of here. Whatever. Yeah. Like, your phone, no, get out of sure. here. Yeah. And so the design, watch this, we are distracted by design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, corporate isn't bad. You know, I, I believe in capitalism and, you know, I yeah, believe sure. in, you know, I'm not, you know, that's my preference. They, they want us to be distracted. Yeah. It, it is, you are distracted yeah. by design. It's interesting, the phrase, pay attention. I think I understand why mm. they use the phrase pay attention mm. because your attention is, is expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It, it costs something. Your, your eyeball, I, I think it's, I had all the numbers at one point, but, but you, your attention is worth billions of dollars. Yeah. And, so, and so when we are paying attention to something, we are paying and for that attention. And we're losing, it's like 
There's, there's this old fairy tale I remember, and it's about this little boy who can pull a string anytime he goes through something bad in life that was given to him by a fairy. And so every time he goes through something bad in life, he pulls a string and his life fast forwards. Mm. And then he gets to the end of his life and he regrets that he didn't endure all the mm. suffering. It's yeah. very Russian, you know, fairy I like tale. <laughs> and to me, that's what we're doing. Our phone is like a little bit of the string we mm -hmm. can pull mm -hmm. or we can check out of life. Yeah. But maybe mm. we're missing out. Sometimes the even the boredom, which is a type of suffering, is a space where God can speak to us. To oh, yeah. That's so good. I, I, I had a friend of mine that he said, I wonder how many miles, if we could record it, we've mm. done on our Instagram. Like if you think, okay, oh, I just moved wrong. like, wow. you know, wow. a, uh, six inches, you know, eight inches, whatever. Wow. Like I wonder how many miles mm. we've done just doing this on Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is that we're on. And I, I think that. there's a hunger, Tori, for what you're writing about, that people, they, they want to regain you know, some life again, yes. and they want they want freedom. Like, mm -hmm. how do we, and balance is the word, because there's some people like, get rid of your cell phone. Mm -hmm. but that's not right. balance either, right? right? No. <laughs> no. You gotta, you need a cell phone to, to do any, you can't even go to Disneyland without yeah. a cell phone, you know? So how do we find, is there, I guess there's a, a part of balance that's probably discipline, isn't it? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, well it's, it's, so I talked about stopping to come to a place of awareness, but the awareness that I'm not, that I'm talking about is not necessarily self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Self-awareness is a popular mm -hmm. buzzword and it's a wonderful thing to be aware of self, what you're doing, why you're doing it, maybe you can make some corrective measures and changes or what have you. But there's another level to self-awareness and that is soul awareness. Mm -hmm. And the reason why understanding the difference between self-awareness and soul awareness is so critical is because the soul is after something, the soul mm -hmm is longing for something. Mm. And if you don't stop to get still, then you will misinterpret the longing of the soul, wow. which is God, which is alignment with God, which mm -hmm. is, is connection with God. Mm -hmm. You will misinterpret that longing and try to appease self through the things that we do, through social media, yeah. through uh, you know, drugs and alcohol, through relationships. And so, so this, this, this message is everything and it talks mm -hmm. about how to get down to the longing of your soul because your mm -hmm. soul is after something That's good. your soul wants something and your soul is intelligent yeah and it knows where to find what it needs if you're just joining us i'm talking with Torre and sarah jakes roberts about this new book balance and i want to encourage you to get a copy of this book as soon as you can it's going to make a huge impact on your life sarah you were talking earlier about there was something you said at the beginning of this conversation about, and it was philosophical, but it was yeah. something like, you thought balance was about time management, uh -huh. but it was actually about something God was doing like inside of you. Yeah. Like you were looking at it. What did that look like practically in your life? Can you give an, like a story or an example where? Sure, uh, for me it was during the pandemic and I was trying to figure out how I was gonna balance everything. The kids are now home full time. Yeah. You know, we've got dinner, we've got lunch and I've got businesses and I had a book that was due at the time and I was trying to figure out the time management and I really just felt like the presence of the Lord saying, like you're stressed about all that you have to do, but there is only one thing that you need to do. I felt very much like Martha in that mm -hmm. moment. Mm. And I, I wasn't selecting that good thing that Mary selected. And when I took the time to really select that good thing, for me, honestly, I have found that good thing in waking up earlier. Because I'd oh, end up getting to the end of the day thinking to myself, I just, there's not enough time in the day for me to take care of myself. There's not enough time in the day for me to pray and meditate mm -hmm. and breathe and enjoy a book or get a workout. Mm -hmm. And um, so there is time. I just, you know, I love sleeping like Jesus loves the church. <laughs> like that's one of, that's, that's my great. second love. This is my first love. But that's sleeping great. is like my second love. But I started waking up earlier about five o'clock in the morning. Wow. And in the stillness and quietness of the house, I had an opportunity to pray, meditate, work out, watch an episode of This Is Us, all before getting the girls up ready for their routine. And so I had to find the time to really check in with my soul mm -hmm. so that I could really determine what I could do for the day. Because there are some mornings I wake up and I'm like, I can't complete this day with all of these meetings and expectations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I could readjust and reshift early in the morning and make room for me to be present in the very life I was trying to build. And morning's a big one, isn't it? I mean, that's yes. how you're kind of starting your day. 
I think there's this myth that there's a morning person and a night person, but you're just a morning person if you go to bed earlier. Yeah. I mean, you just got to change it. It's like changing a time zone. If there's a such thing as a morning person and a night person, then how do we travel, you know, you, and adjust? So I think I think that, that you're right, that, that that beginning of the day, and, and it's a way of investing in yourself too. That's kind of yeah. the theme here is not feeling guilty having a quiet time, not feeling guilty, getting alone time, not getting away, as, as you said, Jesus. You said like Jesus loves the church. I thought you were gonna say like Jesus loves napping because he does love napping <laughs> yeah, that too. Is true, that is true. You remember, I mean, like you think about the story, uh, you know, where Jesus sleeping is through asleep the storm. in a storm, if you know? that is not a mother sleeping through kids yelling, I don't know what is. <laughs> Good work. We don't have a, a high priest that doesn't know what it's like <laughs> to be one of us. That's right, that's right. Yeah, he was totally just like us and faced what we face. And God didn't make us too busy. Did yeah. he? Mm. No. He didn't. Mm -hmm. he, he, and God wants to be with us, and He has a way. And maybe there's a faith element too. I think that sometimes, yeah. especially if we're really in a corner, mm -hmm. and financially especially, yeah. that it takes a little faith to say, I'm going to dial back, even though there might be some financial loss, and mm -hmm. trust that God's going to fill that gap. Do you think that's a good thing to do? It, it's absolutely. That, that was me this week. Uh, I'm, I'm negotiating several uh, significant deals. Uh, and I put them all on hold, and, and you know, and you, you know business, and you know sure. particularly at the early stage of investing in something, time is of the essence. If you get in early and right, then you can secure a, um, a a greater position in what you're in. And just this week, because I was pretty depleted from my book tour, there are things that you know fear could make me think it cost me a whole lot of money, but I put them off. Mm -hmm. You know, my rest is more important than me. I took one of those deals now because I'm not crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Sure, but, yeah. but, but I had capacity for that one. And the others I put off. And, and I just believe that God will never penalize you for prioritizing you. Yeah. Yeah. He good. will never penalize you for getting good and well with him. Because at the end of the day, here's one thing I think is important. Jeremiah 29 and 11, we all know it, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. Well, we have to see that right. If we look at that and think that God is talking about bringing things into our lives, we missed it. Mm -hmm. Look at what he says. For I know the plans I have for you, mm -hmm. plans to prosper you mm -hmm. and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. The focal point on that promise is not what he's going to bring to you. Yeah. The focal point of that promise is him prospering or making whole and well you. Yeah. And also, I think that passage is located to the people in exile, yeah. not the people yeah. at home. Yeah. So they're dealing with a punishment, a judgment, something that went not go the way they thought it would mm -hmm. be. They're in their they're Hebrew people among the Babylonians. They're not a people. They're not of a home. They're exiled. They're mm -hmm. away from the promised land. And mm -hmm. it's and just before that, I think I, I hope I got this right. Mm -hmm. I, I vaguely remember this, but I think God, God says to them something like, basically, like, bloom where you're planted. Yes. Mm -hmm. like, be yes. here yeah. for now. Yes. I'm going to get you home, but for now, be here. It's okay. I've got this under control. Build cities. And then I know the plans I got for you. Yes. Yeah. I got for you. I changed yeah. the no, plans no, no, no. I have for you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good word. Yeah, it's yeah. so, so often, I, it, it, it's like, the thing I'm learning from you during this interview is like, it, the, the sense is, is like, God's not forcing us to be in a noisy place all the mm -hmm. time. He's not forcing us to be on our cell phones all the time. He's not mm -hmm. forcing, that sometimes the, the release of some of these things is going to, open our hands for yeah. maybe the gift he has for us, kind of. Is that right? Progress comes from the place of rest. Mm -hmm. Good. Of rest. Um, when I look at every significant thing that has happened to me in life, it was not from the place of stress, yes. of worry, of hustle and bustle. Every significant dimension elevating thing that has happened to me happened when I found a way to rest in God. There's a chapter in the book called The Gift of yeah. Rest, and that's what it's about. And so rest is not something that happens from without you. Mm -hmm. Coming to that place of rest is what happens inside you. It's, it's Philippians chapter four, you know. Uh, don't be anxious about anything. Yeah. Prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. And the peace of God, mm -hmm. which passes all understanding, will keep your heart and mind. And so, so peace and rest is the precursor for progress. 
That's uh, good. Yeah, it's so good. We're, you know, we're teaching this to our children, too. So our mm -hmm. babies range from 25 to 6 years <laughs> old. Wow. And, you know, they've got the stresses of their life on their level. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they've got a test. They've got homework. They've got marriages and college and job insecurities. And, you know, when they start to get anxious, we tell them to breathe, mm -hmm. you know, take a yeah. moment, breathe. Yeah. And to really allow your soul to come from a place of rest. Mm -hmm. Are you going to, ha, did you do the best that you could do? Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. did the best that you could do, then we learn and grow from here. That's all we can do. And now our six-year-old, she's inspiring me because we'll be in the middle of dinner. And, you know, we've got a large household, so everyone's loud and making noise. And she goes, I'm going to go upstairs and have some me time. And mm -hmm. I'm like, little girl, <laughs> <Yeah>. sit down. <laughs> but yeah. also go take care of yourself. Yeah. Because there is something about giving them the tools now to help them understand life is going to be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. You're going to find moments where you feel imbalanced at 6, mm -hmm. at 19, at 12. And that's okay. That's a part of life. But you can come to a place within yourself where you're able to discover balance again and she reemerges and she's all happy and mm -hmm. ready to play but we're giving her permission to take a minute and unplug even if it means unplugging from us so that she can plug in as the best version of herself mm -hmm. That's such a great point too is that mm -hmm. if we don't take care of ourselves we're teaching our kids not to take exactly. care of themselves yeah like the That's... way we treat ourselves is how the kids are going to treat themselves mm -hmm. for sure we're so. teaching them how to sacrifice themselves mm -hmm. on an altar that we can't even identify or label ourselves mm -hmm. sometimes it's the altar of public opinion. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. the altar of trying to make up for something we did in our past. And we wonder how these generational curses pass down from family to family to family. It's because we never took a minute to be soul aware and ask ourselves, why do I feel obligated mm -hmm. to do this? Is it to prove who I am? Is it to make up mm -hmm. for what I did? Mm -hmm. And when I can come to an answer that it's pure and it's passion, it's what God has called me to do, that's great. But the scarier thought is that maybe it's because I feel pressure and stress. And most of the time, we don't really want to answer those questions. So yeah. we keep showing up and we we just shut that door in the closet. But in our prayer time, in our stillness, in our meditation, we have an opportunity to ask those scary questions in the secret place. Mm -hmm. God's going to keep your secret. But you can say, I don't know why I'm doing this and I feel overwhelmed. And in that space, God gives us permission to, to change, to modify, or to show up differently. So that's, the I think, an incredible gift we get from even that soul awareness. And, and, and what we're talking about... Um, although very true, very biblical, very practical, very can be um, corroborated even in psychology, the average person never slows down enough to get to that place. Yeah. And that's why this message is so important. Yeah. This says you must stop. Mm -hmm. You cannot be who God has created you to be unless you have the faith to stop and really address what's happening inside. Mm -hmm. And if I could just say one more thing, because um, I just feel for all, all the mamas out there watching yep. who feel like I don't have enough time with these activities and stuff. Sometimes stillness for me is taking the girls to the park, letting them play and sitting on a bench and breathing in the air of God, taking in the artistry oh, of our mm -hmm. creator and mm -hmm. reminding myself that the same artist that created the surroundings created me as well. Mm -hmm. And if I can't find the beauty and magnificent and magnificence in my life, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means that I've been going so fast that I can no longer see it. That's a good point too, because the, the idea of stopping doesn't mean that you have to yeah. buy a ticket to right. uh, to Mexico. <laughs> yeah, or even leave. <laughs> or even yeah. leave. Leave your house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just stopping is about stopping your world. Yeah. Take it, it could be in the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. You can be out that's where I front. find a lot of my Yeah, that's thought. a really good, I know. <laughs> Maybe throwing your cell phone in the freezer. Just yeah. for a while. Yeah. In fact, it away. that's probably 90% of stopping is just taking your <laughs> yeah. cell phone and putting it in the closet somewhere. Yeah, Isn't it amazing how, how stretched we've become because of just a cell phone? Yeah. It's it's weird. It, it opens up a whole world to us, but it's also addictive in a way, just like mm -hmm. any, anything else is. I think there's a desperation for what you're calling people to, and I think the Holy Spirit called you to write this book because people need it today. Mm -hmm. well, I appreciate you guys so much in this interview. Is there any final thought you have to encourage people who really want to find balance in their life? Yeah, I think to, for them to know that balance is available, that it mm -hmm. really isn't something that has to be the carrot that is dangling in front of you that you can never reach. God wants you to have it. It's there. And if you work the disciplines, you'll find it and your life will change. That's a great word. And 
appreciate you guys so much. Sir, do you have any other thoughts, too, on, on this, on balance? Oh, no. I just hope that just, people are able to really benefit from the work and the poor that is connected to this work. It is. It is a good work. I know it's going to have a big impact on so many people around the world. One of the things I'm really taking away from this as well, and it's a message I really believe in, is you're not what you do. Mm. Yeah. You're not yeah. what you do. And too often that's, I mean, we have these conversations with people where you meet someone for the first time and you shake hands yeah. and you tell them your name. And the first question that comes out is, what do you do? What do, you, do? Yeah. you know, and, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's, it built into us from our parents and the things that it's, you gotta go, 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 do, 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 do. And yet God can achieve so much more if we just let go. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate, appreciate you guys so much. We've been talking with Torre and Sarah Jakes Roberts and talking about this amazing book, Balance. I wanna encourage you to get it today. I know it'll make a big difference in your life. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. And we know God has a great work in store for you. God bless you. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.